So my login page over here is looking pretty ugly and I want to style it to look nicer. And there's lots of ways we can do this in React, but my favorite way right now is to use styled components. So that's what we're going to use to style our application over there. And to take inspiration for it of what the design is going to look like, I have Notion's site over here on the right. So I like this design. So we're going to try using these form fields here and making the button over here and style the login form similar. Now I'm going to be using version 4 of styled components and as I speak that's currently in beta. And we're also going to be using TypeScript and unfortunately they don't have the TypeScript types up to version 4 quite yet. So we're going to have to do some ignoring of types as you're going to see in a second. But we're going to go ahead and get started now and go ahead and install styled components. So here's what I did. I said yarn add styled components at beta and then also I add the types which we can do with yarn add at type styled components. So now we're ready to get started and really the first thing that I want to do is if I notice the backgrounds of both of these applications, you'll notice mine is white and theirs is kind of white but it's kind of off white and I'm a fan of that so I want to I want to add kind of like a global style. All my pages kind of have this off white look to them now. So how can I do that? Well, in style components, I can use this thing called uh, create global style where I can create a component that's basically a style that's gonna be global and then I render that style. So let's go ahead and copy that and create that right here. And I'm currently in the index file. So this is my root folder or root directory right here and I'm gonna add that to the top level. So this global style, we're gonna get create global style from style components. And this is where the type definitions are a little different. So it says it can't find this, but it actually is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna tell TypeScript to ignore it um, because it actually is there in the JavaScript. So now we can put anything we want to happen globally as a CSS style there. So I'm gonna say global style and render it. And now I wanna add the background color to the body. So I'm gonna say body and background color. And now I don't actually know the color that we want to add here, but I can actually easily find it by inspecting it. So this is something I do quite a bit and I would suggest to you whenever you're doing CSS is to use this inspect tool. And I can use the element picker and I can click on this and I can click on this background here and I can see all the styles that it uses. I can turn things on and off uh, and it'll change how things are styled. And I can also grab what the values are. So in this case, here's the background color. So we're going to be using this a lot when building this out. All right, so let's go ahead and put that color there and let's see what it looks like over here. So now you'll notice the background color doesn't look bright, right, bright white on the left and now it matches Notion's color. All right, so that's our global style. The next thing that I want to do is I really like this button right here. So I want to create this button. Um, so we're going to add that to our login view over here. And I want to use this button throughout the application. So I'm going to just create a new folder inside of source, which I'm going to call UI. And in UI, I'm going to create a new file, which I'm going to call redbutton.tsx. And here I'm going to create that button. So I'm going to import styled from styled components. And here we're going to say export const red button. And here what we can say is styled and then we can specify the HTML element that we want to use. In this case, HTML element that I want to use is a button and then I'm going to do back ticks and then in this little area here, I can write any CSS I want and that's going to be applied to this button. Now, something I noticed when I was inspecting this real quick is this is actually not a button. It's a div and they have a div inside of a div. So that's, I'm sure they, for some good reason, chose to use a div over a button. Uh, I prefer using buttons when I'm building buttons. So I'm gonna try building this as a button and we'll see if this works. And if not, we can always revert it back to a div later. So if I click on this, I can now see all of these styles that this button has. So what I like to do is kind of just copy all of them and see where that gets me. Um, and see what it looks like if I just take those and kind of work off it from there. And then I can always tweak these and go back and fine tune them. So let's go ahead and now use this button and see what it looks like. So let's go to modules, login view. 
and now instead of using a plain button, I'm going to be using a red button. Give that a save. And now we can see, all right, now my button is looking more like uh, this button. So one thing I notice is when I hover, I don't see any difference. And you'll notice I don't have like a cursor pop up. You see how I have that little, that little finger that pops up here, this little pointer. Uh, so we can do that. So the way we can add that is by coming over here and we can say uh, cursor is equal to pointer. So that's just a property we can add. So now we have this pointer when we hover over it. Uh, the next thing we can do is how do we add this little hover? So while I'm hovered over this, I can right click inspect and I can see what the properties of this are um, while it's hovering. And I don't really see any, any difference of like color and stuff, um, but I can also keep this open and I can see, and I kind of see where the background there, so the transition seems to turn on and off and it changes that background color. So maybe I can try figuring it out from there. Um, I can also, sometimes you can use this hover state right here and tell it to hover, but it doesn't look like it's working for this one. It doesn't trigger it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't when I use it. Uh, but one trick that I'm gonna be using here is I'm gonna inspect it. I see it's a different color. And there's this little, so the triple dots, if I hover over that, I can click add background color. And I can actually hover over this and find out what the color of this is. So I click that and I now see the color is right here. So I now have that color and I can use that. So now for the hover here, uh, what I can say is ampersand, and this is how you do it in style components. So ampersand hover, and this basically says, ampersand stands for the current class, because this is gonna create a CSS class for you and add it to the button. And it's gonna add a hover, and here we wanna say background color, and set it to this kind of slightly different white color, or I guess slightly different red color. Um, and now let's try this. So now we have like a similar hover now on our buttons. Pretty nice. Um, and let's begin, I guess I need to deselect this. There we go. And we have that similar hover. So awesome. So I'm pretty happy with how the button looks right now. And that was actually pretty easy. So that's actually kind of the technique that I use for building a lot of things in CSS is I'll actually go see what other sites are doing, inspect them, copy their elements um, and their structure, and then I'll kind of tweak it from there if I want. So for example, we're using the same red as they are over here, but we could tweak this to have our own color composition if we wanted to. All right, so I'm happy with this now. I wanna go ahead and now change my input fields. So right now I have two input fields, password and text. I wanna style them differently. I wanna style them similar to this. So how can we create that? Well, let's go ahead and inspect them and see what they use. So it looks like they have First off, a div up here and a div here. Um, and they have an email and they then have a label plus a placeholder. And they have an outer div and then inside of that they have a input tag. Uh, so we can actually create a similar structure to this. So let's create a new UI component, which I'm gonna call input. And I'm just gonna have a capital I there. So this I'm actually gonna create as a regular uh, React component and we're going to add stuff to it. So I'm gonna have a div and then I'm gonna have a div and this is gonna be the label. Oops, so I actually turned on insert mode. So let's do label. And here I'm gonna have my input field and in my input field, that input field is wrapped in a div. So here's kind of like the markup of what we want. And now I'm gonna say interface props and we're gonna have a label which is gonna be a string. And we'll pass that in. Okay, so let's start by just being able to get this to render on the page. So I'm gonna to need to take more than just a label for this input to work. Um, if we take a look at what we're passing in the login view, I'm currently passing in an on change, a value, a placeholder, a name, and a type. So those are like the four values that we have to accept. Um, so I can add them all right here if I wanted to, and I could specify if this is a string, this is a name, 
or sorry, this is a string, this is a string. The value is going to be a string as well. And then on change, on change, I'm just going to say is anything. Now, there's actually a better way to do this. You don't have to create your own types for this. Um, if I hover over this, I can actually see what the uh, type definition is for this. So this input field has uh, these types right here. And we can copy them if we want to. And then we can have it extend. So I can say extends. And now I have my React component here extends this. Um, and now it ha takes all the props that an input would take. And so now I can get rid of uh, this. Um, and so now I have, for example, on change, name, type, all these fields that I could possibly have. So what I like to do is I'm just going to take all these input props and I'm going to pass them to this input field right here. So dot 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 input props. And let's go ahead and render this now. So I'm going to use the uppercase input. And I'll use the uppercase input here. And now let's see if I'm just missing something. Okay, so label is missing. So I'm going to say label and I'm going to say email. And I'm going to say password here. And then let's see that says enter your email address for the placeholder. So I'll say enter your email address, dot, dot, dot. And then for the placeholder, enter your password. All right, so this is what we have right now. So let's make this a little bit better. So let's start with this label up here. So if I hover over this, we can see we have a slightly different color than just black. Um, let's start by just grabbing those. And if I wanted to, I can create my own little label component. So I'm gonna say const label is equal to styled dot, or uh, parentheses there, div, and we can put those styles there. Um, and now I can use that for my label right there. If I wanted to use this label in a lot of different places, I could also make it its own UI component as well. And you notice it auto imported styled for me up there. All right, so my email is there. Now you'll notice we're using a little different font. Um, we'll just, that's fine for now. Uh, if we wanted to, that's one thing we could upgrade our site on doing is just changing out the fonts and making the fonts nicer. Uh, let's focus on this input field here now. So it looks like it has like curved edges. Let's see how they're doing that. So if I click on the div, uh, let's go ahead and just grab all these and see how far this gets us. And you'll notice we're actually going to be able to get pretty far just kind of copy and pasting the styles that they already use. So I'm going to say const input container. And let's go ahead and put that here. So input container. And now what's going to happen is I think we're actually going to get like double containers. Yeah, so the input field has a container itself, and then we have one outside of it. So it looks like what they do, and we can click on that, is they get rid of all the border backgrounded stuff on their input. So let's copy that and do that as well. So here I'm going to say uh, const, I guess I, don't, I was going to say um, input without border. And we should not be using a div here. This should be the tag should be an input tag there. So now I could say input without order. Um, and let's see, did we do something wrong there? Oh, yes. So I think the props that it accepts here are could be different than the props that it accepts up here. Uh, instead of having to deal with that problem, I'm just going to say anything. For the most part, I think it should go work one to one. If we wanted to, we could try like copying the component here. So if I hover over that, we can grab this themed style thing. Uh, we, we can see if this works a little bit better. And where can we import that from style components? All right. And now maybe we don't have to say as any. Yep, that looks like the props go directly in. So we can use these props 
and uh, now my input's not happy. And yeah, so you'll notice my input is expecting me to pass in a property called ATTRS, which I don't really want to pass in. So I'm just going to go back to what I was doing before and accept any input props, and I think that should work okay. All right, so let's see what this looks like now. That's cool. So it's looking uh, similar to what's going on over there. Uh, one thing I noticed is this kind of blue bar comes up. I'm actually not sure the best way to turn that off. Um, I think, yes, I think it's an outline. So I'm going to just turn that off. And you'll notice right here, they actually turn the, the uh, focus off on all um, classes. So why don't we do the same? So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add that globally. So it's going to be a global change. So when any of the fields are focused now or any of the classes are focused, we're going to say an outline of zero. So now we don't have that blue over it. Perfect. It uh, looks like they have a slightly different color also for the placeholder here. I'm not sure how to change that. Um, I can see what they use over here and if there's something that they use. I don't see them changing it here. If I go to computed, maybe there'll be something. So. That's something I haven't really talked about. Styled here is all the CSS that the user adds to this. Computed is the actual values. So from here I can see all the different values that this field holds. Um, in this case, I don't think there's like a placeholder color that we can actually add to this. There's not like a prop called that. If I, see, if I say placeholder color input CSS, we can see how to style this. Um, all right, so we can say placeholder and change the color that way. Okay, so let's go to our input field over here. And I'm not sure if I have to put my ampersand or not there. I'm gonna try putting my ampersand there and see if it breaks or not. And now let's see what color that this, this is. So I guess there's not a great way to actually select what the color of that is that I know of. So maybe just try this trick right here and we can get the pretty close to that color of gray. Okay, so it's this BB color. And we'll get rid of the opacity. Um, and cool, so now my placeholder is looking a lot more similar to what this one is. Oops, let's get rid of that. And let's refresh the page to get rid of the style that I just applied. Okay, the other thing that I just noticed is these fields are looking pretty similar now. Uh, the fonts are a little off, but that's okay. Is And also, I think that maybe just the font weight's a little a little less. So what if I say, like, font weight 300? Does that work? Um, I think it brought it a little less down. What if I do, like, 200? I think it just looks a little bit lighter over here than over here. I'm not sure if that's affecting it or if it can go any lower. Um, but this button, I can now, I want to make kind of full width. At least that it matches the same width as this input box there. So let me see what my login view is looking like. Do I have, yep, I have a, a, style, a div around everything. And so this button here, I'm going to get rid of the div around it. And I want to see if that will make it stretch. Okay, so now it stretches the whole width. So instead of doing that, I want it to just match the same thing as these inputs. So I think if I get rid of all these divs, there we go. And I have all these inputs. And this is where I like to, I'm going to move this over and spec my own components. So I can see the structure of what I have. Okay, and the other thing I like to do is to play with this. So now you can actually add your own styles. Like if I just click on the style here, I can say with uh, 400 pixels and I can see what that looks like. So what I think I wanna do is just give this a width, that way it's the same width here. And so I can hover over this, and by the way, there's probably a better way to do this. Uh, let's say 207, so when I hover over this, it tells me the width. So now I can say uh, up here, width is 207. 207 pixels and it's a little off center so now I just I think need to like center it so it's not off because I guess this has like some padding on it or something um, let's go ahead and do 
What happens is if I inch it up a little bit? And I have it justified center and left, so I'm also kind of interested to see why we have a div here that doesn't extend all the way. I kind of want to hover over what we're doing here. So we're giving some weird attributes that I think that are also could be messing it up when we, uh, this outer div here. So let's remove some of these and see what happens. So I got rid of the position there. I set the width to 100%. What happens if I got rid of that? All right, that seems to be doing something. Um, I guess it's only going to wrap that. Can get rid of the box shadow, background, cursor, margin top, margin bottom. Display flex. I don't think any of these properties um, are doing that. So let's restart from this. And I think what I want to try is giving an inner div here. And I think I could get some success with that. Okay, so this is close to what I want now. So now this div, so this div is lining up correctly now. So you'll notice we have this container div, then we have a div here, a div here, and a div there. And they all kind of stack to each other. But for some reason, this goes outside of it. So maybe I need to make the width of this just more, I guess. What happens if I just hard code the width to 207 pixels? That, it still goes off a little bit. So I think the first thing that could be messing up is that position relative. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Because we're not gonna be using that particular property, at least with ours right now. And I'm not sure if I just made my play, I wonder if the placeholder is just because the placeholder is really long. So what happens if I make the placeholder shorter? So I'm just going to just type in less words here. Okay, so it's not the placeholder. So it's points like this where I guess you just kind of have to tweak it until it does what you want. And that's pretty much what I would do. I think I'm going to leave this for now because I don't see an obvious way to do this. Let me know in the comments below if you know the best way if I can get this login button to just line up all the way over here. I think the key to it is getting this guy to move over here would work out a lot better. All right, so let's move on to something else. So I have that login. Now my register still looks the same though. So my login and register actually share a lot of things. So what I wanna do is I just wanna create a new component here, which I'm gonna call form.tsx. And now this form, I can kind of copy basically all of this login stuff. Now, if your login forms were a little bit different, you'd probably have to do some different stuff. But in this case, I'm going to just move pretty much that whole div logic over here. And I'm also going to remove pretty much my handle change and my state. So the entire form state I want to just handle over here. Um, and then over here, instead of calling mutate, so I'm going to copy this and move it to my login view. So here I'm just gonna render a form and I'm gonna say on submit and I'm gonna paste that on click stuff. All right, so now let's get all this stuff working. So my form over here, when this is submitted or when we click the button over here, I wanna just call this.props. Oh, let's actually pass it in this.props.onSubmit, pass in this.state. So that's gonna be our form values there. Um, let's go ahead and import some of this stuff. So we're import our input fields and we can import our button over here. And password and email can come from destructuring. Do we destructure up here? Yep, so I'll copy that. All right, so we're using, I'm not sure why it did it like that. I want to change this to a relative one. There we go. 
and then we're gonna take that as a prop now. Uh, I don't know why I didn't specify what the type definition of the state was, but let's do that as well right now. And then our on submit is going to take data, which is gonna be the state values and not, just not return anything. And we can pass in our props and our state here. Um, and now it doesn't like this because uh, I believe name needs to be either of email or needs to be um, password, it says. And in cases like this, I just wanna say anything because I know that this name is correct and this value is correct. So in our login view over here, I can now say uh, data, pass that directly in here. There we go. So let's import the form and that looks good. So pretty much the difference between my login and my register is just what happens when we submit. So I refactor it into now a form component over here where we're handling the form stuff and the look of it. And now I have this form, and now I'm gonna use this form over here. Well, I don't have to copy it, I can just put it as well. So here's my register, and I'm pretty much just wanna change this on click method. So I'm gonna say form, and let's close the tag there. And I'm gonna call this on submit. And let's import this. And let's get rid of these fields because we don't need them. And we get it from the data now. Okay. So let's see what my register looks like now. And I'm guessing my app crashed. So let's restart that, yep we added a new form element and I think there's something yeah we can delete some of these at the top here all right in a register so these look good now um, the only difference I think that may be in the forms we want to pass us some parameters is the uh, label here the submit label or I guess we can say just button text so let's take that as a prop uh, so why don't we say this.props. And then we need to add the uh, prop as the type definition. And then over here, my button text is going to be login. And then for register, it's going to be register. Okay. So now we see our register here. And if we go back to the login, do we see the login? Yeah, we do, nice. Um, let's go back to register real quick. The other thing that we're doing differently right now is kind of our, our guy up here, so this is our header. I actually do like the header of how Notion does it as well. The whole thing I like is these kind of like these kind of button things up here. So let's try adding that to the header right there. Um, so let's go to our header. Where did we store that in our shared? Oh, it kind of makes sense to put maybe our UI in shared and make that into one folder maybe, because I kind of split it up. And they kind of serve a similar purpose. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make use the same color that I'm using over here. So let's see the header, background color. All right, so now that we have the same color, kind of how they do here. So let's create, see if we can create these kind of button things. So instead of links, because these all look like links, they have buttons almost. Let's see if they use buttons. So again, they seem to use divs instead of buttons. I'm gonna first try the button method and see how that works. So I'm gonna call this header button.tsx. Well, here we can actually, yeah, that's actually fine. I was thinking we may just be able to call it .ts, which we can because there's not going to be any uh, TypeScript or JSX, but uh, I think it's fine to have it in case we do end up adding it later. 
going to say styled and do div. And let's try adding this stuff here. And I see no difference because we haven't added them yet. So here's our links. So this is going to be now a header button, header button. And I guess I want to move the link to be outside. There we go. And let's move the link outside as well. All right, so let's see this. what this looks like now. If this looks any different, did it crash again? Nope, it's up, and I don't see any difference now in this. Yep, no difference. The thing that I guess that really makes a difference is when you hover, I suppose, is when that background pops up. And by the way, what did I make this? Did I make this a button? No, I made a div. Let's try making a button, see if that messes things up. Okay, now we have kind of like this button feel to it. We also want to make it a pointer. I'm going to go back to doing a div for this one. I'm going to say cursor pointer. And now we have a pointer there. Let's see if we can get that background to show up. Let's see what they use to grab or to use to make that background. All right, so it looks like it's happening down here. So if I hover over, looks like they just set the background color on hover to to uh, RGB value. So let's try that. Okay, it only does it when I have it hovered there. So it's RGBA 50-50-50.08. So on hover, we're gonna say background color RGBA 50-50-50.08. See what that looks like. Nice, that's kind of what I want it to look like. Now I kind of want to get rid of what this default link looks like. And I believe there's a way to do it, but I forget. Is it just this color um, that we add to the web link? So let's let's look it up. So how to remove Okay, so the color is going to be inherent in text decoration none. So we already, did we set the color anywhere? No, we didn't. It doesn't change anything. Oh, I'll tell you why. We need to add this to global links, I suppose. So it's going to be over here. Like that. All right, so now we, we globally changed how the links look. And I think I just want my links to be hashtag OD, 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 which is kind of like an off black. And now I can have this. And now it's looking a lot more similar to Notion. Now I kind of globally changed how my links work. That might be not an ideal thing to set up, but maybe we'll, we'll switch it later if it turns out to be a problem. And I think the last thing that I want to do is I just want to center this stuff. So, and kind of line it up a little bit. So let's go back to our header. I think the main problem is the H2 here. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna turn this into a header button as well, by the way. Say header button. There we go. And I want this to be kind of a big header button. So I'm gonna just increase the font size. So I'm gonna say style on it. And this is going to be font size, let's try 24. And now we have kind of a bigger one. Now, does this line up? Not yet. So let's click on that. What if I say line item center? There we go. So let's copy that. And 
and I have to camel case this because we're using it in the style tag. And let's make this a string. All right, so this is looking more like a, a simpler header at least. So we can click on this to go to the home page, the login now. And I don't have a button to go to the register. There we go. Anyway, I think I'm going to end the video here. That is how you can do some styling. As you can see, I'm not actually an expert at CSS or an expert at styling, but that's kind of how I get by. I kind of just tweak things a lot and kind of inspect elements, see what other people use. And so that's the main thing I would recommend to you when trying this out.